Can CPAP make me sick? That's a, been a common question over the last, I don't know, I've been in the field 11 years and a lot of people think their CPAP is what's the cause of making them sick. The sinus infections, the nasal problems, the cough, whatever could be the case. And well, maybe it could be. Uh, of course, getting sick is never something that we want to you know, that's the last thing on our, on our mind is like, I can't wait to get sick. I can't wait to have a sinus infection. I can't wait to get me coughing and fatigued and sneezing and feeling like garbage, you know, and when you're using a CPAP machine, it can make therapy very difficult. You know, for example, like if you're using a nasal pillow mask and you get sick and you can't breathe through your nose, well, how does, how do you make it work? How does it happen? You know, and sometimes there's a uh, nasal decongestion, some different things that can help with that. But overall, like, you prefer not to be sick. And of course, what if you were the reason you were sick? What if it's something we did to ourselves, such as improper cleaning? It did definitely facilitate sickness from CPAP. Now, the CPAP itself does not make you sick. Okay, it is an electronic device that provides air there's nothing about the cpap that can make you sick now the not following the manufacturer's instructions for care replacing parts preventing contamination that's where the sickness comes from that's where the problems lie so the machine no now in the same realm you know statistically we we spend about 60 to 70 percent of our so you could pick up sickness from other places, but if you're not properly taking care of your CPAP machine, it is a massive catalyst to why you're sick or why you keep getting sick. Now, a couple of the things that CPAP, that CPAP can um, harbor, you know, there's the Staphylococcus aureus, which is basically a staph infection. You know, it's a bacterial infection. It can cause issues with the skin. It can cause pneumonias. And it's just stuff that you can get down in your lungs. Um, Candida albicans, it's a fungal infection. Now, one of the weirdest looking things is, a, is fungus growing in somebody's lungs. Um, I did a report on that many, many, many years ago. And I remember looking at pictures and videos of this fungus and it was aggressive, it was weird. And of course, fungus tends to grow in wet environments. CPAP machines have humidifiers. And of course, uh, some of the an initial issue you can be get was, um, it's called thrush. It's like a throat issue where your, your mouth and tongue is all really white and it can cause, of course, you can get infections. And then of course, the wonderful E. coli, which is usually synonymous with eating food and unclean food and stuff. But, you know, of course, you're touching your mask, you're putting your mask on your face. You, what if you have dirty hands? What if you're not cleaning, washing your hands before you put your mask on and, or just general cleanliness. Of course, that causes the wonderful gut issues and, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, having to use the bathroom, not, not the most fun. So a couple of things, another reasons why CPAP might be getting you sick. Well, start from the beginning of the CPAP. The air intake, you have a filter. Some machines have one filter, some machines have two filters. But in general, the filter can be one of the most forgot about maintenance items on this entire system. And you'll get filters that look just like my scrubs and you're breathing that in. It's disgusting. Filters that are black with just dust and issues and you could have dog hair, you could be breathing in through these dirty filters. Plus it's causing the system to work harder. It's just like a filter on anything, like your air conditioner, your, your car filter, if it's clogged, it causes everything behind it to have to work so much harder, okay? It prevents, you know, of course, the airflow from, it can be affected where the airflow is. Some of the times the filters get sucked into the machines, can make the machines run weird, make a bunch of weird noises. Then you have the masks, uh, then you have the humidifier, because the next general component, the humidifier. Now, the humidifier itself, if you're using distilled water, that's just pure H2O. There's nothing generally in it. But... It's where you could have, harbor some bacteria, it's where you have the mold issues. And then if you're not draining your humidifier, just emptying your tank or washing it out, a lot some humidifiers have little gasket seals in them that are ignored that if you were to like not never clean your humidifier and you pull this gasket out, run your fingers around it, it's gonna feel a little slimy. It's gross. That's where you get sick. 
Of course, um, you know, proper cleaning is no more different than just soap and water. Just hand soap and just regular washing. This is so you could wash it just like a, a dish in your sink. Then you got the mask and hoses. The long length of the hose, again, one that good thing about the CPAP is the air is going one direction through it. Nothing travels back through the CPAP. So, but the hose is gonna support the airflow coming through it, which means the humidification coming through it. And, you know, I've had a lot of patients say, oh, well, well my hose itself, I, I, there's, I, don't, I don't see a reason why to clean it. How do I know it's dirty? Well, smell it. It smells funky, like mildew or gross. It needs to be clean. So in water again, the mask, you know, years ago, I had a patient whose mask had black mold in it. And this patient was putting the mask on every day and it had mold in it. How it got mold in it, don't know, but it is a mask and there's humidity coming through it. You're breathing into it, coughing into it potentially. And this patient wasn't cleaning it. It's where you get skin irritation. You get the redness on the face. Now getting some marks on your face is very common with CPAP. You're having something pushed into your skin. Depending on a person's skin tone or skin type, it can be more prominent than others. But if you're legitimately getting like sores or you're getting like, you know, issues on the insides of the nostrils from like nasal pillows or getting like the sinus infections inside the nose, you could continuously be just reintroducing bacteria and issues right back into your face every single time you put this mask back on because you're not wiping it down, you're not washing it. How do you know your CPAP's dirty? Well, it stinks. That's pretty common. It doesn't smell good. If you can, if you can smell your CPAP machine, it's dirty. Clean it, wash it, replace it. And the skin irritations, as I was just mentioning, um, you know, somebody who's a full face mask where uh, touches on the cheeks, you know, under the chin, you get pimple buildup. You can get like what looks like almost like burn sores just from it sitting on your face. That's the staph infection and issues like that that need to be cleared up, you know, hydrocortisone, it helps with inflammation and such. Clean your mask. Uh, you get, you, of course, the synonymous stuff with being sick. You get a sore throat, you get a runny nose, you get a cough, you get nasal congestion. You get, you're consistently getting these respiratory issues and sinus infections that just, you get antibiotics and you're trying to treat it. You're constantly trying to introduce a way to fix this. And then you, what the problem is, the catalyst is, well, you keep throwing the bacteria back into your face. How do we clean your CPAP? Generally speaking, if you're to follow a manufacturer's recommendation, the manufacturer is going to want you to, at minimum, wash the system, wash everything once a week. Okay. Some manufacturers have certain rules, and every single pamphlet or booklet that comes with a mask, comes with a machine, is going to detail out their recommended cleaning procedures. Okay. But just keep it, keep it base simple. Once a week, wash your mask, wash your tubing, wash your tank warm soapy water at least okay if you want to disinfect the system which is always a smart move white vinegar and water you can run some white vinegar in the tank in the in sorry in the uh, in your sink put some water mix it with some water throw it in there let it sit for five ten minutes soap and water wash it get the vinegar out unless you like that smell some people do i don't um drain your water tank pull it out empty it out you, you know dump it in your sink let it dry all day and then you have the ability these days to use these sanitizing machines, the so clean system. Um, I just was answering questions about it just a little bit ago to a patient who was curious and asking, you know, just what does it work? Like she was said she was reading online or forums that, oh, it doesn't work that well and it doesn't it doesn't serve its purpose. Well, it does work very well. So clean itself uses ozone. Now, ozone. Nothing can live in ozone. It kills everything, including this cute coronavirus thing that we're dealing with. It absolutely wipes everything out. The thing about ozone, though, is, is that you have to let the system run its course. The course of a so clean disinfection is usually about two hours, okay? You gotta let it clean, and then it runs its um, repurposing the ozone back into oxygen, and then it puts it back in the atmosphere so it doesn't, so it's safe. You let it run its course, okay? It's also a disinfection system. So your masks will still need to be wiped down. The headgear will still should still be cleaned because it's just pure disinfection. 
The one good thing about the so clean is that people who have been getting sick or are at risk of the sickness, like they're immunocompromised, maybe they've been dealing with the cancer, or maybe they have autoimmune disorders or something along the lines, and they can't risk it. This is the prime disinfection system for you. It's going to wipe everything out. Okay, so a so clean system has it, it has a huge purpose and serves a big uh, big purpose in the world of cleaning your CPAP supplies. The so clean, as I as I said, it is it's going to clean your system. You throw your mask in it, as you can see with this uh, the, this diagram. There's a, what looks like a filter, a gray filter inside this picture. Now that is what's creating the ozone. It's a device that does need to be replaced about every six months. It's about thirty dollars. But you put your mask in there, you, you run your hose into it. There is a line, a black uh, O3 line that runs to your water tank. And you basically just turn the system on. It's automated, it's safe. It's not gonna cause any health issues as long as you follow the manufacturer's recommendations. It cycles the O3 through the whole system for seven minutes, completely disinfects everything. You're, by the time you're, you use it when you go to work, by the time you're ready to go for the day, your system's clean. It's ready to use and such. There are times where people who use a so clean that do report of having a an, a unique smell. Okay. Now it's an it's an ozone smell. It's not causing a problem, and it's like dead bacteria, is what so clean likes to call it. It's that's the what the dead bacteria is going to smell like because it has disinfected your whole system. Now. Another very big way to help prevent sickness is change your supplies. This stuff doesn't last forever. Okay, CPAP supplies are not a lifetime supply of masks and stuff. It doesn't last forever. The hose, the tanks, the filters, there's certain guidelines that your insurance will follow. They allow this stuff to be changed at certain intervals that follow the manufacturer's recommendation replacing your mask every three months, the head straps every six months. Again, machines generally have a one or two filters. Guaranteed they're gonna have an ultra fine filter in the system. Now that filter should be changed at minimum once a month. Manufacturer allows it to be changed every two weeks, okay? But at minimum once a month. The machines that have the secondary filter is a washable filter. It's either like a foam or another kind of material that can be just soap and water washed. That's good to wash when you wash your other equipment. That's replaced every six months. Of course, swapping out new hoses every few months. And then of course, your machine itself. I've had patients say, how do we clean the inside of your CPAP machine? Well, if you're on top of your filters, you generally don't need to clean the inside of your CPAP machine. And if for some reason, somehow, some way, like the coronavirus got inside your machine, okay? It doesn't live on solid surfaces for much longer than two days, okay? The only way this is gonna be introduced is you have to be physically exposed and then risk it coming into your machine. Now, obviously, if you feel like you're exposed to getting tested and stuff, proving that you have or don't have the coronavirus is important, but if it's in your machine, 48 hours, it generally is gone. It cannot live outside of a human host for longer than two days. This is according to the CDC. The, C the CPAP machines can also be replaced generally every three to five years, depending on insurance. Getting a new machine or a second machine is never a bad idea. <clears throat> now, if you need replacement supplies or information on cleaning or purchase of SoClean, this is a phone number to Valley Sleep Therapy, 480-361-0124. They can handle the phone calls. SoClean systems do not need a prescription to purchase. You can buy a SoClean. Supplies require a prescription. If you do not have an active prescription, you can schedule an appointment with uh, one of our providers at 480-830-3900. We can get you a prescription. We can get you the new supplies, get you new parts, okay? So that being said, End of the slides. And. Hello, I'm back. Can you see the questions, Andrew? I have a couple questions going right here. All right. So Candace Rickson, the, what is the best way to clean nasal pillows? 
The simplest method would be, of course, you pop them off, you go to your sink, put a pump of hand soap on them, wash it with a little bit of antibacterial soap, rinse it out, set it up inside. Simple, easy way. Now, you want to get a little bit more cleanly inside of them. You can put a little bit of soap on a Q-tip, get inside, underneath the pillows, go around them if you want to get generally on the inside of them. You generally have to, obviously, if you're putting soap on a Q-tip inside of you, you're going to rinse out a lot, a lot more, but that would be how you would want to clean your nasal pillows. Um, you could, again, soak it in white vinegar. That's a disinfection as well. Um, <clears throat> Candace also asked, is a secondary antibacterial filter used with a uh, used with a humidifier useful? So um, my thought is what you're asking is that there's a they use secondary bacterial filters that go generally between the machine and the uh, the hose. Now there is certain settings on certain machines that need to be enabled in order to use that particular antibacterial filter. Those are generally used in a hospital-based setting, some long-term care facilities or like you know, uh, again, hospital. They can be purchased online. Again, they plug in between the tank and the regular hose. The problem with something like that is, is that a lot of these newer machines use specific hoses that are designed for the machine. And if that's something you use, that filter gets in the way and it won't allow you to click correctly. Okay. Um, Holly Hoffman asked, how do you get the water out of your tubing when you clean it? Well, obviously, if you clean it in the morning and you hang it up, you have water droplets in, in the tubing, okay? That doesn't hurt anything <laughs> at all to run your system, just turn it on and run. It's not going to, as long as you don't have an ocean swimming through your tank, it's fine. But a lot of the tubings also have heating cores and heating elements that's going to heat through the system. It burn, it'll burn that extra water droplets out of it. Also, some patients do connect their tube to their machine, turn the machine on, let it blow air for like a period of time. I don't recommend that. It can kind of tax out your motor, but it's a method. Um, absolutely do not take a blow dryer to it. I've had people do it, melts their, melts their tubing. It's plastic. What about hanging it over the shower? Isn't that, that a good That just lets it drip dry and stuff, and right. that's, that just is the general how you do it. There are patients that do when they get two sets of tubing, they'll cycle back and forth. They'll let one tubing dry for a week. Mm -hmm. And then the next week when they swap out, they take the dry hose, connect to their machine, wash their other hose, hang it up, and it's drying for a week. If you only have one hose, then it's kind of a different process. But ideally, two hoses is the way to go. You always should have spare backup equipment. Um, Lilia Gonzalez, is there such thing as a HEPA filter for CPAP? Absolutely, there are. Um, a lot of the machines use the ultra-fine HEPA filters in them. Um, we sell them for our machines. Uh, both the ResMed and the Respironic system can use them. Um, they exist, absolutely. These are great questions. Um, can you get hard water buildup in the tube or the nasal pillow? Yes, uh, well, will you get hard water buildup? Yeah. Now, here's the thing about hard water buildup. A lot of the reason that you're going to get hard water buildup, say in your tank, for example, that's where you're going to find most of the hard water buildup. Obviously, you're using tap water. That's a given. But the reason you get it is because the tank itself is physically force evaporating the water to create humidity versus regular evaporation where a lot of times it kind of the, the molecules will disperse and the, the, it'll disperse into the air with the evaporation. This is causing it to work faster, so it leaves the sediment buildup. Now, that's where white vinegar comes into play. You can pour white vinegar down your tubing, slush it back and forth, and a lot of times that will help prevent any sort of hard water buildup or anything inside your tubing. All right, good question. Thank you guys so much.